On today's show, it's the decisive Game 5 between the Guardians and Yankees, and everything is on the line. I'll talk about the pitching matchup, I'll share my thoughts about how the series has gone so far, and I have some stories about Game 5s I've attended in person. One good and one really bad. So get ready, because an all-new Locked on Yankees starts next. You are Locked on Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Tuesday? Is it a happy Tuesday? I don't know. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Stacey Gotsoulias. I'd like to thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms, including Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can also watch and subscribe to Locked On Yankees on YouTube. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button to like our videos and click the bell so you're notified as soon as our videos go live. And also leave comments. I like your comments. I like reading them. And I like responding to them. So here we are. Game five. Oh, I am. I'm very nervous. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to look at my uh, Apple watch (laughs) and see what my heart rate is at. Because I've been sitting here and we'll see what it's doing. It's 107 just from sitting here. My normal resting heart rate is around 68 to 70. So yeah. I'm anxious. I'm nervous. I'm sure everyone is. You should be. It's game five. It's do or die. Win or go home. Win or your season is over. Also, win and face the Astros. (laughs) Both teams are... (laughs) Both teams are in trouble. (laughs) Against the... I mean, let's be honest, okay? The Astros are going to be heavily favored in the ALCS, no matter who they play, right? It's... It feels like it's inevitable that the Astros are going into the World Series, at least. Maybe one of the NL teams will surprise everyone, but it feels like it's heading that way. Oh, that's not fun. So anyway, game five. Yankees, Guardians, everything on the line. Jamison Tyone was going to start game five it if it were played last night, but because Mother Nature decided to do her thing for the second time this series. Nestor Cortez will be pitching after he pitched on Friday. I don't know if I like this move. And I know, I keep saying Nestor was the ace all season and he's a great pitcher, but I this makes me nervous. I'm hoping I'm wrong and that it's just pre-game playoff nerves and not some weird intuition thing that I'm feeling. I will say this, I want Aaron Boone to take a page out of Alex Cora's playbook, not the cheating part, of course, but the all hands on deck part. Garrett Cole marched into Yankee Stadium last night before the game was postponed and before they knew that they weren't going to be playing. And he told Aaron Boone he was ready and if they needed him, he would pitch. I believe today would be his throwing day. Alex Cora did that throughout the 2018 run, and guys pitched on their throw day. So Aaron Boone, if Nestor gets into a situation where he needs to be relieved, but you don't want to go to the top line relievers just yet, I don't know, maybe throw Garrett Cole in there. He's all fired up. (laughs) I mean, it's game five. You need to do everything that you can in order to win the game. But I'm just afraid of Boone's decisions being the thing that buries the Yankees like they did on Saturday. So Nestor Cortez didn't get the decision on Friday, obviously, because his team let him down at the end. And his ERA is 3.60 so far in the playoffs with three strikeouts. For the Guardians, Aaron Savali is pitching or starting for the Guardians. I don't think he's going to stay in too long. He's 5-6 and six with a 4.92 ERA on the season. So this might be one of those situations where you'll see the Guardians bullpen come in 
And you might even see guys that you wouldn't expect to come in, come in, because again, game five, everything on the line, throw stuff at the wall and see if it sticks. <laughs> because I can't say the real world because I can't say the real word. Now, out of the Guardians, because the Yankees have not faced Savali so far in this series. So far in this series, Andres Jimenez is one for two against Cortez with a run batted in. Ahmed Rosario hit that home run against Cortez. He's two of three. Steven Kwan is one for three. I'm doing quick math in my head. <laughs> and let's see, other big people. Oh, Jose Ramirez, 0 for 3 in 3 at-bats. Miles Straw, 0 for 2 in 2 at-bats. And Oscar Gonzalez, 1 for 3 in 3 at-bats. Again, no one on the Yankees has faced Savali in the playoffs. So this will be an interesting matchup. I'm not comfortable with it. And it was odd last night because the Guardians were the ones who announced that Cortez was starting for the Yankees first. Because they said Aaron Boone wasn't available and then he texted everyone to tell them that. So was Aaron Boone, like did the Yankees and Aaron Boone leave the stadium before the game was even postponed? What happened? <laughs> what is going on? We should actually talk about that too briefly. We have a couple minutes. MLB really dropped the ball last night. They they really dropped the ball. Now, I know a lot of people were bitching and moaning because I think by 9.30, 10 o'clock, things had cleared up and they probably could have played. But I understand MLB's decision to not want to start the game at like 10, 10, 15 on the East Coast. But the Yankees making the fans sit there the whole time and people finding out on social media first that the game was postponed like five minutes before the Yankees made the announcement that the game was postponed, that shouldn't happen. My friend who was at the game found out the game was postponed because of a Buster Only tweet. What are you doing? <laughs> and it's funny because as much as Yankee fans are going to complain about this, they'll be at the game today. I mean, they spent all that money on their tickets anyway, but could you imagine sitting out there that whole time Actually, I can. I was at an opening day, uh, 08, the last opening day of Yankee Stadium. We were at the stadium for, well, I got there early, but I was stuck there for a good four hours before they canceled the game. I mean, it just did not stop raining. And I think they were really waiting to see what time they could schedule the game for the next day. But it was just like, could you let us know? Just let us know what's going on so we can leave instead of sitting here in the rain. Thank you. So yeah, it was just... It was not good all around. Not a good job by MLB at all. And that also has something to do with the way they scheduled this series originally. And I have a lot of thoughts about that because I am really annoyed with the way this series has played out so far. And I feel like the reason that it's played out the way it has is because of MLB's inept nature and it feels like MLB is constantly getting in its own way. They can never do anything right. Never. <laughs> it's unbelievable how much they screw themselves over and over and over again. So in a moment, we'll talk about how annoyed I am right now with MLB with regards to how they've handled the postseason scheduling so far. But first, betonline.net is your number one source for football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online, where the game starts. Thanks again for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. Subscribe now to Locked On Yankees on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. So here are my thoughts. And... I've been thinking about this all day, and it's been bugging me all day. It annoys me 
that they put the break between games one and two. Now, we didn't know that the weather, well, I should say, that. they didn't know that the weather was going to be crappy when they made this decision. But they knew the weather was going to be crappy on Monday. The forecast said that Thursday was going to be bad. And it didn't lie. It didn't change. Nothing changed. The reason why MLB put that off day between games one and two is because they didn't want four games again. They wanted to split the AL and the NL for TV ratings, basically. So because of that, they essentially had two off days between games one and two. Any advantage that the Yankees had over the Guardians was done. Any momentum the Yankees had after winning game one was done. Yeah, this series could have been over in four. If that hadn't happened. Because if the Yankees played on Wednesday night when they were supposed to, they would have won that game. I'm telling you right now, they would have won that game. I have no doubt in my mind. They would have gone to Cleveland with a 2-0 lead. I don't think they would have swept. Although it's possible, because of the way Saturday's game went, if it wasn't for Boone's stupid bullpen decisions, <laughs> the Yankees could have won that game, and then it would have been over in four with Cole winning on Saturday, uh, Sunday night. But no. No. So here we are on Tuesday, the day before the ALCS starts, with the Yankees and Guardians playing a decisive do-or-die game five at 4.07 p.m. So when... Someone wins, they're going to have to fly out to Houston tonight and prepare for the game that starts tomorrow night. Good job, MLB. Good job. Great. Everything is great. I really think that that messed them up, that off day. It shouldn't have happened because it made it where the Yankees had only played two games in nine days. The bye was supposed to be an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't turn into an advantage for any of the teams except for the Astros who had it. The Braves didn't have an advantage. The Dodgers didn't have an advantage. And if the Yankees lose the series, they didn't have an advantage. No, if they lose this series, it's on Boone. It's on Boone for his stupid bullpen decisions on Saturday. And it's on Boone for continuing to play Isaiah Kiner-Falefa at short. When we all were like, no, put someone else in there. And then he finally decided after he basically, it was Boone and IKF's fault that they lost that game on Saturday. And I feel bad. IKF seems like a really nice guy, but he can't play shortstop. He just can't. We've talked about it all season. Well, not all season, but recently. He double pumps nearly every time he throws the ball. He's short sometimes. Rizzo has to scoop. Um, he just, he doesn't, he doesn't have short hands. He's better at third, although even though he's better at third, I think Donaldson is better than he is at third. I don't know. The Yankees just don't know how to build a roster. That's their main problem. And why is Marwin Gonzalez there? He doesn't need to be there. He really doesn't. <laughs> Rizzo's fine. Rizzo's fine. And I know that he was probably the backup because DJ's not around. And DJ can play first. I know that they were trying to get Oswaldo Cabrera to play first, but are you going to put him in every position? Why don't you guys have him pitch too? <laughs> like, no. So I kind of understand why Mar Marwin Gonzalez is there, but they haven't used him yet. So it's kind of like you could have had Peraza. You could have had Peraza playing shortstop, a sure-handed shortstop the entire series. And the kid can hit. And he isn't affected by being on the Yankees. He was fine in his limited time. But the Yankees never know what to do with these kids. They don't do it right. Other teams are like, yeah, play. Have fun. The Guardians have a bunch of kids. They weren't afraid to play them. But the Yankees have to baby these guys. And I say it all the time. IKF isn't a high-profile, shortstop, free agent, millions of dollars ego guy that you have to placate and keep him at shortstop. He was a stopgap for the dude that you're not playing. 
You held on to Peraza and Volpe instead of going after Correa. Play Peraza. There are so many things that make me angry about this team and the decisions that they make. And it's the higher-ups on the team that make me crazy. Peraza should be playing. He should be playing. IKF should be a bench player. Peraza should be starting at short. Oswaldo Cabrera could play left. And then if you feel like his defense is kind of iffy in left or you want better defense in left, put Hicks in left. Hicks is fine at left. I mean, yes, he made that horrible play against the Red Sox. But other than that, he's been okay in left. He seems to be better in left field than he is in center field. And they have Bader to play center field. So you don't even have to worry about that. Yeah, okay. I have to calm down because this team is making me crazy. <laughs> but this might be the last time I get to bitch about this stuff because you never know what's going to happen today. The Yankees could lose and the series and season could be over. So this might be my last time to um, complain about the Yankees and their ridiculousness. I don't want it to be the last time. I don't. I'm not ready for this season to be over. As frustrating as this season was at times, it was really fun in the beginning. And it picked up again toward the end. And we had a lot of things to cheer about. And I don't want it to end yet. I like this group of guys. You know, there are a lot of guys on the team I actually like. And I think they're fun. And I want to see them go on and play even though it's an ALCS against Houston, and we know how those go. <laughs> oh. So in a moment, I'm going to recall a couple of Game 5s that I attended. One was a good one. One was not a good one. But first, let's talk about the bad Game 5 I went to. Let's start with the bad news first. <laughs> because it was Cleveland in 2007, 15, God, 15 years ago. I had season tickets, partial. I had Sunday tickets. And because I had those Sunday tickets, I had tickets for one game in each round of the playoffs, which usually worked out well some of those years when they made it past the first round. And my seats were in the upper deck above first base every Sunday. Box 623, row C, seats five through eight. I miss that place. I really do. Those seats were great. And anytime I gave those seats out to other people, they were like, oh my God, they're so good. Even though they're in the upper deck, you're right above them. I said, yeah, I know. And it's great because the old stadium, you know, with the way the upper deck hung over the field, that's why it was so loud and crazy in that place. Although the new place gets loud too. It's just not the same vibe. It's slightly different. So because my seats were in the upper deck for the season, I was always stuck in the upper deck. But they put me in the first row of the upper deck in right field. And at first I thought, okay, this is a really cool vantage point. But then during batting practice, while Cleveland was batting, Travis Hafner nearly killed me with a BP ball. And I'm not kidding. <laughs> I had to dive out of the way. And as soon as that happened, I looked at my friend and I said, yeah, uh, I'm going to go up there and wait for batting practice to be over. I'm blind in one eye. There's a reason why this eye moves all over the place. I have no control over it and I can't see out of it. <laughs> so even when the balls were coming right at my, coming right into my direction, I, yeah, no. So I waited up. Remember the walkway that went around the upper deck when you came out of the tunnel and you either went down to your seats or way up to your seats? I was standing up there. I thought I'd be safe up there, and I was. He wasn't Barry Bonsing it, thank goodness, but, you know, yeah, I just played it safe. And then I sat through a game and watched the Yankees lose. And I watched Cleveland celebrate on the Yankee Stadium mound, and I was bummed, to say the least. That was depressing. That was my first... And only, so far, division losing or division series losing game that I attended. And I will admit I was crying. I was crying and then yelling at a security guard who wanted me to leave. And I said, no, I'm just looking around and soaking in this horrible moment so I can remember it for the rest of my life. Six years prior, I went to a decisive game five, but it was in the Yankees' favor this time. 
It was a Monday afternoon in 2001. My father called me up shortly after lunch and said, Stace, you want to go to the stadium tonight? And I thought, do I? Do I want to go? Do I want to sit there and what if they lose and I start crying in front of strangers? And it's funny because when I think about this story, it felt as if it took me 30 minutes to make the 30 minutes, 30 seconds to make the decision. But I made the decision in about five seconds. And I said, yeah. And as soon as I said it, I thought, what are you doing? And my dad said, okay, meet me here. We'll go. Okay. Now, my dad said he had tickets. So I thought he had tickets. He didn't have tickets. We met with a scalper (laughs) on like 157th Street. Apparently, this scalper was someone that he, it was the brother of someone he knew. And I was like, are you sure this is legit? He's like, yeah, he wouldn't do this. He wouldn't do anything bad to me. I'm like, okay. And sure enough, it wasn't. And the ironic thing was the tickets that we got were in the next box over from my season tickets. We were in box 625, row C, right next to my seats. It was very strange, but very cool that at that game, I wasn't that far off from my view of the field. And it felt like I was at a regular season game, even though the stakes were much higher. And I was a nervous wreck. My dad was not. My dad was very confident. I did not get that gene. I've told this many times on the show. If you're new, my father, Gus, is the reason why I do what I do. And I didn't get his confidence, Gene. He was like, oh, yeah, they're winning tonight. Don't worry about it. He, well, okay. He declared that they were going to win the series as soon as the flip play happened. He says, oh, Oakland's not coming back from this. The Yankees are winning the series. I'm telling you this right now. Like, he was dead set on it. And I wanted to believe, but I'm a pessimist. I'm a pessimist. So that game, Jason Giambi, They could not get him out. And he was annoying me because I knew the rumors were going around that the Yankees were going to look at Jason Chiambi and sign him for first base. And I did not want him on the Yankees. And my dad even said after Giambi's third or fourth hit, he's like, he's putting on a show for George. I'm like, yeah, great, (laughs) great. And my dad was making fun of me because I was so nervous about it. He's like, they're going to win. Don't worry. They're going to win. They're going to win. And when they did... He said, didn't I tell you? I said, yes, Gus, you told me. Okay. But it was very exciting to be at a division series clinching win (laughs) instead of a loss. (laughs) I experienced the win before I experienced the loss. And I haven't experienced either one since, have I? No. I've been at pretty cool playoff games, but yeah, those are the only two decisive games I've been to. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, let's not let's not talk about how I was supposed to be at game six against Atlanta in 96, but my mom made it so I didn't go. And no, I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. 26 years later, I'm still bitter. You know why? Because my dad's gone and I didn't get to be at a World Series clinching game with my dad. My brother got that experience and I missed it. So yes, I'm still bitter about that. And I think that's understandable. Um But yeah, those two game fives are the only decisive games I've been to. I should change that at some point. And no, I'm not going to try and go tonight or later. Mm -mm. So don't even try to offer me tickets because I, I won't be able to do it. I won't be able to handle it or stomach it at all. Yeah, so tonight or this afternoon, it's not tonight, it's 4.07. We're going to hear plenty of discussions about shadows. That'll be fun because of the time of the game. And as I said, the weather is fine. If you don't live in New York, it's nice. It's very nice. The blue skies are out, clouds, but nothing threatening. So the game should be fine. Everything should be dry from last night. Actually, I think it was dry by 1030 last night. And yeah, so uh, that's it for this episode of Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Remember, you can listen to the show in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. 
You can watch and subscribe to Locked On Yankees on YouTube. Again, hit the thumbs up button, comment, and click the bell so you know when our videos go live. And now that you've made us your first listen, how about making your second listen the Locked On MLB podcast? MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and a unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories from around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked On MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. One more thing, if you could be so kind, please rate the podcast and spread the word about this podcast to your fellow Yankee fans. We would really appreciate it. Enjoy your Tuesday. I'll talk to you sometime after the game. And go Yankees.